So this article just kind of talks about how this is not new for the Democratic Party. This, the Democratic Party is a 200-year-old party. Is one the, the, It and the Tories are the two oldest political parties in existence. Okay, so they, they've been terrible for 200 years, and we think, David Sirota, Marianne Williamson, think we can vote fascism out. We, they think we can vote white supremacy out of this party that's been there for 200 years. It is completely just bizarre, and it just kind of talks about some of the parallels of what AOC is doing here. What she is actually doing is just soaping up all the... Uh, 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 just look at what we're talking about, Nick. I'll take this down, and I'll put up the video. Look, we were all together with Bernie. Now look where we're at. You see how many she's able to keep, though? She can't keep all. She's not trying to keep all. She's just trying to keep some. And look who she's able to keep. Even And bring them to the right. Now all of them are preaching war and Ukraine and blue flags and stuff like that. It's just completely uh, uh, it's bizarre. Go ahead, Nick. I have the video ready. Yeah, so this is... And I... I um. When you listen to Noam Chomsky, for example, and 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 like Kyle Kalinsky will say that he that he looks up to Noam, they get like their tastes are completely different on this. Like he's repeating the same nonsense that I hear from MSNBC on the Ukraine conflict, where they pretend everything that happened before 2022 didn't happen, where it's just a racer of basic facts, and you're gonna see it throughout the video, so you can. Put, uh, so this is the. Um, uh, I passed you said just so you play the video. This is this yeah. is uh, Cal video. This right? is yeah. Cal, Cal's oh, video. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, uh, I didn't yeah, even say it. that. But yeah, this is Cal's video. So let's uh, play it. And I don't know, like I don't know, we had to watch the whole thing, but we can watch maybe like I don't know, maybe five ten minutes. We see because this is a, yeah. This, when, when we rage, we, 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 we see. We see. We see. Cause I made like four okay. minutes in. I let you guys know. I made four minutes in. I like uh, Jesus. <laughs> and you gotta see why you gotta see why i try not to stop it too much but the information yeah. that's coming from the social democrats and the professional managerial class on this conflict and you guys see why breaking point so bad why why crystal so bad they're bad influences all around each other on this issue apparently they have the to stay people... the, you don't understand go ahead go ahead no, but I was saying they have to stay in the good graces of the Democratic Party. And what are the things they're willing to sell us out on? Israel and war. And you can't cross the Democratic Party on that. Go ahead. And it's sad because I like I, I still remember Kyle used to do good reporting on the, like, the war on terror. But ever since he got invested in the Justice Democrat strategy, he now feels the need to defend these war criminals, these people with horrific votes. And they are downplaying the urgency because what Cal does in this video, you see a lot of progressives, they're pretending Jose is crazy for bringing up the urgency of nuclear war and attacking AOC for these votes that have consequences. And Chomsky himself said, many peace activists have said that we are at the greatest threat of nuclear war since the Cuban Missile Crisis. Like, this is real, and these people just shoot shooing it. But anyway, let's put it if video. I, if, 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 I, if, if this is how ridiculous, let me put it in a different context. If I came, you and I, you and I at the house, and I came running into your house saying, Hey, nigga, there's somebody outside with a gun. This nigga shooting, this nigga doing all this stuff. And then I say, We should do what R. Kelly did and let's get away. Because I said, R. Kelly, are you going to ignore the big thing I just said? You yeah. see what they're doing? You said Tulsi Galber, and they're ignoring the fact that I just said there's somebody outside shooting with a gun. Wouldn't you put that the level of a nuclear war, making the decision to fund nuclear war, would you put that at that level like something that's very important? Right. But that's what they're doing. Like, what about what about the, the warning about the guy outside? Gotcha. Yeah, R. Kelly, I shouldn't have, yeah, let's not do what R. Kelly said. Okay, yeah, it's a bad example, but what about the shit I said about the guns outside? You get what I'm saying? Like, it's so bizarre. You see this comment. This is a great comment uh, from Marcus. Uh, he said, RBN taught me about the Ukrainian hit list. We were one of the few people that brought that up. We had Wyatt Reed, who was on the hit list. And I promise you, Kyle Kalinske never brought that up. In this video, how many times are they, is, is he going to bring up the journalists that Ukraine have been going after Man. by showing their hotels? How many times is he going to mention 
the Ukrainian citizens that the government retaliated against for quote unquote having pro Russian sentiments. The bodies of mass graves that have been found that people that have been killed by the Ukrainian forces. Amnesty International literally saying that Ukrainian forces are, are uh, yeah. setting up shop at civilian areas, endangering them. So these this, these start, these details are purposely left out by these people for what? I'll let you guys fill that blank in, but let's get to the video. Breaking not, points. And you guys can see breaking what. Points. Hey, breaking points, Crystal and Sagar. We know Wyatt, so if you don't have his line, just hit us up. You can call him. Have a live person talk to you about what's happening out there so you don't have to keep just looking up, you know, websites online like you are web, what was it, Euroreb or whatever they're reporting from. Like there's actual journalists that you could bring on who can talk about what's going on out there instead of you just going off these fake uh, articles. But let's play the Kyle video. You let me know when you want to stop. Oh, volume. As there we was go. Doing, uh, in a Sorry, let, let me start because the volume, it missed like three seconds. All right, guys. So Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was doing uh, an event, a Q&A event. And it looks like it's probably from her district in New York, although I'm not 100% sure. But um, this video is going viral on Twitter because right. she got confronted by oh, anti-war protesters. Now, they... He said, you want to respond here? No, he, no I, was just, I was just laughing. I like it going. He's like, he like, this video, look at his tone there. This video's going yeah. viral. Like, well, yeah, now, like, I had, like, now I had to respond. God damn it. <laughs> like, 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 and you could tell, like, how much you want to bet before he saw the video, he's going in. I'm seeking to see how I can get AOC out of this shit. Yep. So he's watching it. <laughs> Through that lens, and let's 100%. continue. They don't put anti-war in in air quotes. I'm going to put anti-war in air quotes. So let's break it down. Let's see what's fair, what's unfair, mad. and all that stuff. And um, we'll try. I just noticed what he just said because yeah. in the caption they put by anti-war protester, he. But the unquote, guy who's unquote. fine with all of this shit going on, I just find it funny, like the audacity to make that point. So he's the so audience. mad, bro. He got he's so mad. Jose got on. Hey, but go ahead, go ahead, CJ. He's so Fair. mad and all that stuff. And um, we'll try to we'll try to uh, see who's right, what makes the most sense, etc. Let's do it. To see who's right and who makes the most sense. So he's already setting the lines up. Congresswoman, none of this matters unless there's a nuclear war, which you voted to send arms and weapons to Ukraine. Tulsi Gabbard, she's left the Democratic Party because there are only more arms. Okay? You originally voted, you ran that. I, I, let me pause it already because this guy saying Tulsi Gabbard left the Democratic Party. Because they are war hawks. See, this is where he fucked that up. That is not the only reason. See, now this, now this is this is where Jose fucked up, and we say I said to his face too. Sean brought up Tulsi here because I give these weasels well, a now. So, and this and is his put, friend. This is the other guy, though. This is not Jose yet. Jose yeah. comes in second. Yeah, but the, okay, yeah. Right. So yeah, right. So yeah, he. That's where he messed up, and that would um, Kyle's gonna take advantage of. That will all. These AOC Justice Democrat single fans are gonna take advantage of, but they also what they don't realize that reflects on them too. Because why are you so desperate to shift this conversation? Yes, that's a bad example, but let's focus on the core issue. Why are we being unserious? That's why I, I, I was when we had him on. I wanted to focus on this issue. We can say we disagree, but after that, we move on because we don't want to distract. But anyway, let's continue the video. She left the Democratic Party. That was one of like, what, five, six, seven different reasons why she left. And most of the reasons why she left were actually right wing criticisms. Stuff. Okay. So, but the criticism is war. So, yeah, what is the point that you're making? You get what I'm, you see how that's not a point. You just said, yes, she did mention that, but she mentioned other things. 
but that was one of the reasons. So you get what I'm saying? It is one of the reasons if that's the point he's trying to make. As so in- they, are, they are saying that Tulsi left because the Democratic Party is uh, pro-war. And there may be other reasons why Tulsi left. But the activist is saying to AOC, you should leave the party because they are pro-war. That's the point. And Kyle and everyone right. missing that. <laughs> so I, and I see a lot of people in chat. Tulsi Gabbard is not anti-war. We all know. Everyone who's serious knows that. We all know her record. The point is, Tulsi Gabbard left the Democratic Party because her reason is the Democratic Party is, is pro-war. So why won't you? That's the point. And everyone is ignoring that. So even if he is wrong for bringing up Tulsi, the point is that Tulsi said she leave for that reason. So you should too. But go ahead, let's play the video more. Right, and and that's the and maybe that's the reason why that's the only reason they said of why Tulsi left is to say because of their war hawks. So they're saying for that singular reason you should leave also. Right. So that is the point. But they want to look, you know, they want to uh, look past that part and zero in on this. It's just a. This this is I just find this this uh response where you're not taking on the point so like intellectually like fragile. Like it's like you can't you can only have this response if no one's in the room with you to respond back. Because if you're in a room with somebody, if he's here talking and saying this. We'd be like, oh, no, this is bullshit. And just, you know, just rip it apart. You can only say that in a room with nobody else to push back because it's so easily just like, like, OK, but what about her leaving because they're hawkish? And here's the problem. Also, Nick, it's not like they can they can go and say and point to that the Democrats aren't. The Democrats are in office and they're the ones that's pushing nuclear war like. That's the point. So what can you say even to even point out the Republicans? Both of them are war, uh, 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 war hawks. But who right now in power is pushing the envelope the most? Who? The Democrats. Exactly. And you look at the title of the video. I was not realizing it. I probably should have realized this earlier. But even the title of the video is yeah. fucking right. so <laughs> swarmy and... Oh my God, he's such a weasel. Because he doesn't bring the title of the video should be AOC called out for Ukraine votes. You know how he doesn't even bring up the main the main topic of discussion, not in the title. It's a, it's all about the tribalism, baby. AOC versus Tulsi fans, right? But go ahead, let's play the video more because it get worse. It get way worse. We're only about ninety seconds in. It get way worse. But this, but this is this is this is the professional. And if I didn't spell that right, let me know. This is the professional managerial class sending out their bat signal. Uh, uh, AOC, we got this. You cool? You coming on in three months? Cool, cool. We got this, AOC. That's what this is. This is them saying, "Hey, we got to come to bat for our class," and that's why they all stepped up. Because if you go through their videos, go through their videos and see how many did a, a video when she voted for NATO. See if you can find one. I think I know human is somebody did one because I found it. No, nobody else. When they're doing these bad votes, nobody says nothing about anything. Very funny. Let's continue. Stuff like, oh, they don't care about religious freedom. They don't care about the rule of law. Stuff that honestly is garbage. And if you don't take my word for that, go and watch my full breakdown of Tulsi's announcement that she's leaving the Democratic Party. Now, since that happened, that's what I was okay. talking about. Okay, you already did. That's the video I was talking about. That video that he just referred to is the one that I was watching earlier that we may want to bring up because it's because he believes he believes he's painting a picture that somehow Joe Biden or the Democratic Party is like significantly better or different, and it's just. It, <laughs> It's just, I, I mean, like I said, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I never understood people that even listen to this person because his logic is like a house of cards that is just easily just collapsed, and I don't get it. But um, let's listen uh, some more. Uh, you let me know when you want to stop. It's muted, CJ. Oh, my bad. New Hampshire Senate candidate. 
there are some people who think, <clears throat> hey, Tulsi's leaving the Democratic Party and she's going to, you know, whatever, like join the Green Party or or um, join some other left wing third party. And and that's why she's doing it, because she's so principled and she's still criticizing Democrats from their left. That's not true. That's not true. Tulsi has for about a year now. Been Two minutes in, and this motherfucker not even brought up the fucking issue actually yet. from their right, not from their left. Like when she said about Build Back Better, that, you know, it's big government spending and the government's already too big. That's a right wing criticism. There is no other interpretation of that. That's just what that is. Bro, shut the fuck Wait, what up. Is the no point? What is the point in that? No. What is the point in interjecting this here? That's the question. Do, do you understand this, Nick? Like, what is the point in interjecting all of this? And a lot of the stuff in Build Back Better was stuff that Tulsi had previously supported. Stuff like universal pre-K and elder care. Uh, you know, negotiating for lower prescription drug prices. Medicare expansion. So for her to say, that's big government, so I don't like it, that's a right-wing criticism. For her to say, Democrats don't care about religious freedom, religious liberty, that's a right-wing criticism. I don't know why you would seize on the one thing which was nominally a left criticism, which is, oh, the Democratic Party are war, ho war hawks. But then she also immediately stumps for Republicans. That He said that's nominally a left criticism. Nominally. <laughs> party is also full of war hawks. In fact, it is worse. Trump had a worse foreign policy than Joe Biden does. You, at this point, I'm convinced he's talking so long just so people can, can forget what the original topic of the video is at this point. What does this, what does this have to do with anything that Jose said with, with AOC? And I'm going to show you guys a tweet after the video of AOC responded, bring up some irrelevant story about some other protester interrupting the event. And she, in the strategy from her camp, is to do not address this. You do not answer to those peasants. Yes, I'm going to vote on something that's extremely important, an extremely important geopolitical issue, but I'm not going to explain it to you guys. That's guys, that's an unhinged position to take as a politician. You're gonna vote on war, you're gonna vote on billions of dollars for anything. And then when when people ask you, can you at least tell us why? Fuck you. Who the fuck you think you are? You think I'm gonna explain? <laughs> you think I'm gonna explain myself to you? So the reason why they do that is because they know the Kyle Kalinsky's, the Walker Bragmans, the, uh, someone left in the chat, David Pacman came out with a video today. Just said Tulsi fans talking about this. so <laughs> and I'm taking the comment to war for it, so I'm being risky with that. But uh we gotta we have uh, serious right so now. Unserious. and this is why our being is so threatening to these motherfuckers because there was this giant progressive wall that is here to defend Bernie Sanders and AOC at all costs, and AOC and the squad knows that walls exist, they know it exists. So LC's like, I'm not gonna say shit. Nah, I'm not gonna say shit about it because I know Kyle Kalinsky gonna cut for me. Right. I know Walk I know Walker is gonna cut for me. I know all these people are gonna cut for me. So I don't have to explain myself. I got a whole army of independent media uh uh yeah. careers that are gonna defend me. But let's play the video some more because like we haven't even got to the substance of three minutes in. I told you I I, I promise to God they do this on purpose. I'm gonna tell you guys something about YouTube. I know I've been YouTube game about two years now. All YouTube commentators understand that most people watch maybe the first 30% of the video. A lot of people watch the first 30% of the video, and then numbers start to drop off. And that is a and, and it's just a fact across all YouTube channels that there's a big drop off because people got ADD like a motherfucker. People click on videos, <laughs> and I do this all the time too. People will click on videos, they'll watch the first three or four minutes, and then they'll they're like, all right, I got the gist of what happened there, and they'll move on. I know this in every YouTube. A commentator will tell you this because the analytics will tell you that, right? So Cal, being a veteran, knows the first four or five minutes is extremely important. So what does he fill the first four or five minutes with? A bunch of bullshit that has <laughs> nothing to do with what AOC was caught out for. Very calculated. I don't get these people being fed out, but let's continue the video and let's see if he actually dives in on something worth a goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> And to, to stump for a Trump-aligned candidate, I mean, okay, this guy supports Trump. What did Trump do? 432% increase in drone strikes. 
ripped up the Iran deal, tried to do a, a, a coup. In- Who is he talking about as a Trump supporter? Who? It doesn't, it doesn't even matter said, at this point. It doesn't even matter. I don't understand. Like- That's what I'm trying to get to. I was just about to say, like, what is the relevance of whoever he was referring to as a Trump supporter? What is the relevance of AOC voting to fund NATO? AOC present vote on uh, Iron Dome. AOC uh, uh, sending money to the Ukraine. What is the your under talk about that? These people are so weak, intellectually weak, and I think they know it. Nick, who in Venezuela? bombed Syria, occupied part of Syria, and was stealing their oil. So, Walker Bragman breaks this down. Gabbard's guy, Army General Don Baldick, doesn't think Medicare negotiating drug prices is a good thing. In fact, we covered this story recently. He was on Fox News saying, I can't wait to roll that back. Move the fuck on. He actively wants higher drug prices. Tulsi's stumping for him. And wants to end the direct election of senators. Huh. He opposes legal abortion, has promoted Trump's big. So this would be like this would be like, you know, the Jackson you mentioned in the Jackson five and when they were small and Michael Jackson is talking and Jermaine is talking. And then that person just skips over them with the mic and goes to Tito and be like, Tito, forget Michael. Let's talk to you. Like, why are you missing the main the main point, like you're intentionally and in, in going down the path. He's not saying, oh, yeah, Tulsi Gabbard, she's pro-war, blah, blah, blah. Like you're going getting receipts of receipts and then receipts of other receipts to prove a, a non-point. To prove a non-point. This is so freaking the big lie. Ridiculous. And suggested that COVID jabs are installing microchips for Bill Gates. Well, that's that's nice. That's glorious. Really cool. Really cool stuff. All right, let's run this back a little bit. Nuclear war, which you voted to send arms and weapons to Ukraine. Tulsi Gabbard, she's left the Democratic Party because there are plenty of... Now, he said two things. He said the Tulsi Gabbard part, but he said you voted to send arms to Ukraine. Where is his... Why aren't you uh, uh, addressing that part? So let's continue. So what, what is- okay? You- I'm sorry, are you saying something? So I'm, I'll be real. Quick. I'm gonna let the video yeah. play. What a real commentator would do, someone who's acting in good faith, they would say, "All right, let's analyze uh, what's the pros and the cons of sending weapons to Ukraine. Why AOC did it? Is that the right thing? No, this, at no point does he does this. But let's let the video continue. Originally voted, you ran as an outsider. Yet yeah, you've been voting to start this war in Ukraine. You're voting to start a thermonuclear war with Russia and China. That is massively overstated. Who invaded who? Uh, he didn't say it's a lie. He said it's overstated, and he's about to break it down. It's overstated because of who started it. Is that what you're about to go down this path, Kyle? <laughs> this is ter- this is it's, this is terrible. I've never understood why people listen to this person, but this is one of the l- least effective intellectually r- oh. arguments I've I've ever heard. About yeah, this, I, told you, I, made it, I made it. I told you I made it four minutes in. Look at the look at the time step right now. This is the part when I, this is the exact point where I was like, <laughs> Ray I was like, this is so fucking stupid. He's like, who invaded who? The United States, motherfucker. The CIA was arming Nazis in Ukraine, and you had intelligence agencies from the UK and the US in Ukraine as early in 2014. So d- define what it means. For a country to invade, I would say it's the CIA backing the Nazi militias that was bombing Ukrainians, and he purposely leaves that out. Purposely leaves out the Minsk Accord. He, put, they always do this. They purposely leave out information, so then they can say, "Oh, I wasn't lying. I just brought up the fact that Russia invaded Ukraine," which is true. <laughs> But when the United States entered World War II, you didn't say the United States started World War II. They entered the conflict. You can criticize Russia if you want to for entering the conflict. But that is what they did because they saw Ru- the ethnic Russians being purged by the Ukrainian state that was government sanctioned. You, you had these regions that Russia liberated that wanted, they- you had these regions in-, in the Donbass that was asking 
for Russia to uh, annex them. They did a vote and already approved of that before. So then Russia, all right, after denying them before, we finally got to engage and listen to the Russians in eastern Ukraine that are being subjugated. But, but Kyle doesn't bring up any of this shit. But we wanted like 15 seconds, let him go, because you guys can hear how horrific his coverage on this. And I'm like, oh, he's Media Sign. He's Media Sign. <laughs> If you if you watch media song coverage on Russia Ukraine, then you get the exact same shit you about hear from Kyle Kalinsky right now. But let, let it be a play, uh, CJ. Tulsi Gabbard, she's left the Democratic Party because there are funny who are hot. Okay, you originally voted, you ran as an outsider, yet you've been voting to start this war in Ukraine. You're voting to start a thermal nuclear war with Russia and China. That is massively overstated. Who invaded who? Who invaded Wait. who? Russia invaded Ukraine. The U.S. didn't invade Ukraine. The U.S. didn't invade Russia. Ukraine didn't invade Russia. Russia invaded Ukraine. So in the wake of Russia invading Ukraine, why is it a bad thing to give them defensive weapons? Why is it a bad the, the, the white <laughs> left. The question for the white left is why is this a bad thing to arm Nazis? So do you guys think we're overstating the difference between us now? Why is it a bad thing to arm the people that have been shelling and killing ethnic Russians that torture people who have political disagreements with them? That's Kyle's question. Why is it a bad thing to arm Nazis? Unbelievable. Now, let me get to another point that Kyle being lazy and being the propagandist that he is, he just, he just, he just brushes over. He said, you are voting in... In the video, you don't rewind it, but he said, AOC, you are voting uh, to escalate nuclear war with Russia and China, and then Kyle gets triggered and then proceeds to say nothing to rebuke it. So he didn't mention the China part. So AOC and the squad vote, voted for weapons to Taiwan, which, which is a direct red line of China, which does what? Escalate the risk of nuclear war. So Kyle has no idea what he's talking about here. Because when he, when he says that, he's like, what are you talking about? He probably doesn't even know about that vote. Because he's so busy covering Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro. He probably doing a tough <laughs> yeah. reaction video. These people have yeah. no idea about what's going on in the world. And it's obvious. Yeah, he you go no look idea. at their content. Yeah. You go look at their content. It's 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 that. It's it's the Candace Owens. Like we cover that and we cover both. We do a lot more content than them, though. But that's what we no, do they anyway. Do a lot. Let, let's they do a lot of content, but they just cover bullshit. Because sorry, yes. CJ, go ahead. Because they, they do. They probably like they're probably like eight to ten videos out per day. Like seven, eight of them motherfuckers are about. Hey, yo, what? Why bitch Pierre was wrong here? Dave Rubin exposed. <laughs> Robert Wright slams on Tucker Carlson. Always <laughs> some bullshit. Guys, look at the videos. When you look at what we cover, yeah, we we talk about fun topics every once in a while. But we got an activist com summit coming up next week. I was doing stories on black political prisoners. You were doing stories about uh, uh, prisoners being tortured and that being loud. We covered the police state. I covered the apartheid state of Israel. I did countless countless segments on that. Like we cover, I cover state violence, the class war. They cover a bunch of bullshit, and then they mislead their audience about what's in these fucking bills and what these people are voting for. Because Kyle, what he did just there, and I and I pause it. I want Kyle's argument to be played a little bit longer. But what he did there was he took his argument and said that's ridiculous. When that is definitely something AOC and the squad did by voting for weapons to Taiwan. The, and I'm gonna explain something to Kyle and Voss because you guys don't understand the reason why. We are not in nuclear war. It's not because of the United States. We are not in we are not in nuclear war because of China and Russia. They keep allowing the United States to cross the red line without nuclear retaliation. And I covered this months and months ago. And I, we get back to the video at this last point. Russia and I covered this in April. Said Sweden and Finland joining NATO is such a red line that the nuclear option is on the table. They said that then. Uh, Finland and Sweden, they start voting to implement them into NATO, and then Turkey fell, folded, and then Russia backed off. And no, do you guys hear that from Kyle Kalinske in the mainstream media? And you can still find this article. I can pull it up quickly after this video. Where they threaten nuclear war if Sweden and Finland join NATO. Then the West say, I, I bet you won't do it, you fucking pussy. 
I bet you won't do it. We're going to do it anyway. We're going to do it anyway. They did it in Russia. Like, these motherfuckers are crazy. So you guys see the old, it's all, according to Paul Kalinsky and according to the Western chauvinists, it's upon Iran. It's upon China. It's upon Russia. It's upon Venezuela. And all these countries are victims of Western colonialism and imperialism to be the people that constantly de-escalate while the West can do whatever the fuck they want. And then uh, the people who respond are criticized. But so I, I that's the, strat- that's yeah, the strategy I, of white supremacy. That's been the strategy. You retaliate. You're the violent one. That is actually the strategy. Uh, let's continue, though. Let's listen to some more. Now, look, I've told you guys this. After the first, like, two or three packages, I would have started to wrap it up a little bit. You know, at this point, we've had, what, over a dozen packages sent to Ukraine, and it's been, like, somewhere between $50 billion and $80 billion worth of weapons sent to Ukraine. Yeah, I agree. That's overkill. And yeah, I agree. That's probably because... Oh, wow, Kyle. Know, I'm, whoa, oh, Kyle. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so impressed. Kyle said he would only fund Nazis $50 billion. Yeah. Oh, this is <laughs> that yes, yes, he was saying this is him criticizing. This is what he would <laughs> yeah. we say. You don't criticize her. He would, yes, I do. I said she should have packed it up a lot earlier than that. He literally thinks this yes. is criticism. This is him having his uh uh kind of doing his anti-war chops, exercising his anti-war hey, chops by like, just doing this. Go ahead. <laughs> he's like, CJ, I'm gonna show you guys how radical I am. This is me throwing them a bone. That's still throwing us a bone. And I'm going to show you guys how radical I am. I disagree with AOC and Bernie. I will only fund Nazi 50 billion. <laughs> it's unserious, man. This is so unserious. I play it. Enriching the military industrial complex. That's probably the, the thing that they care about first and foremost. So I don't deny that it's overkill. But to say that this means you want a, a, a nuclear war, what kind of bullshit is that? If the United I think Nick kind of laid it out already. What kind of bullshit is that? Like, I, I don't understand why are we trying to operate in this small area of nuance here? You get what I'm saying? Like, like half of that. Like, why are we trying to operate here as leftists? Why aren't we? And it's because of two things I've been thinking. In particular, him access to these people. He doesn't really really criticize him. You know why? What happened when he really criticized Bernie? Remember how he got kicked off his own show? He you lost think Kyle's access. gonna do that again? He you think Kyle's access. gonna do that? Like, and he was st- he still kisses his ass. And I did a stream on that. How Kyle is very weak. <laughs> What's up, Savvy? How Kyle's yeah. very weak on that point about how are you still clucking after Bernie after he did that to you? <laughs> Man, that's, that's what's we, about for them. Nick Savvy style, I'll read a comment. We get back to the video. Uh, that's why he won't come on RBN. He won't go on any channel that will challenge him from his left. I'm not really interested in talking to him, if I'll be honest. I'm down to talk to anyone, though. Um, but yeah, yeah he's, not people, like, he's not like never, number on a list. <laughs> the go reason ahead. why these people do these solo shows, they would never have discourse and dialogue. And then whenever Kyle's like, oh, I'm going to do something special, man. I'm going to have a guest on. We're going to have Vosh on today. Like they could have some other Western show <laughs> on. I, I remember hey, all the social Democrats were like, oh my God, the Kyle and Vosh collaboration. So Kyle what? used to stand, <laughs> he used to stand behind the screen. Yeah, bro, I told you, I'll be breaking shit to CJ. <laughs> I don't know none of that was like a, that was like a year ago. That was like a year ago. But they oh, they only God. stayed in their circle, and then people think like, "Oh man, they really got the game figured out." No, I know they just don't. They are not challenged. There's no intellectual curiosity here. They're not going to question uh, the narrative. They they, uh, they will question the old wars, right? They will look at like, "Oh man, the Iraq War that was bullshit, wasn't it?" The the the. Uh, the Iraq war in the 90s, that was bullshit. Vietnam is bullshit. And then when war propaganda hits today, they fall for it. <laughs> they always happen. They always fall for the current shit. Then they look back like, yo, that, that was the old war. Boy. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they look back at 9-11. They look, oh, yeah, that was some bullshit. But back then, nigga, you couldn't say nothing wrong about invading. You couldn't say nothing. Because I remember I was working at AT&T. Everybody there, manager, they was like, yeah. And I was the only one like, nah, this shit is some bull. And they was looking at me and it was like, and they're like, they would say stuff un- like aloud, but not to me. Yeah, well, maybe if you think this is wrong, maybe you shouldn't live in the United States saying shit like that. 
because I was against that shit. And I was, I couldn't, be, like, that's how it was. But now everybody had it right, right? That's now everybody, oh, I had it right. What, I had it right. And watch, in like in like four or five years, once it was, it was clear that we was right and we are winning the public uh, uh, war on this. This is why you see protests that are being silenced in Europe. Like, I covered the protests in France, the anti-NATO protests in Germany. Like, there are protests everywhere that are being silenced. Meanwhile, Putin has a setting. They did a, a corporate media uh, a story. I think I covered it on you. I don't, I don't remember. But I remember I did cover it. It was like Putin, he, he loses support over the Ukraine war. His He used to have an 80% approval rating. Now his support is in the mid-70s. <laughs> Nigga, do you know what Joe Biden's approval rating is? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what the approval rating is? Less than half of that. Less than <laughs> half of <than> that. <laughs> <laughs> because Russia, they know what's going on. In the, the West, they've been propagandized. Now they are seeing the economic consequences of this. And winter haven't even hit yet. <laughs> That's the thing. It haven't even got as bad as we all project is going to be. So yeah. tick, 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 West. Tick, tick, tick. Especially, anyway, let's, especially let's continue. I'm getting a little yeah, off yeah, topic here. But let's, let's yeah, let's, let's continue. Let's continue. The United States sent weapons to Palestinians to defend themselves against Israeli aggression. Would this guy say, oh, you're, you know, you were, you're a he, did, did this motherfucker you're really compare? War. Did this motherfucker, re- the audacity of these white leftists? I didn't even hear this part. I, I've been race quit by now. This motherfucker <laughs> Let me rewind it so you can hear it again. This motherfucker <laughs> just compared the occupation of the Palestinian people to arming Nazis. These are the people people say are our closest ally. Are you fucking serious? To say this to any Palestinian leftist, this, you get punched right in the motherfucking face. I'm gonna talk to my friends right now. Like, you see what this motherfucker just said? <laughs> no, play, no, go back 10 seconds. That's unbelievable. I did not see this. Yeah, part. I, I couldn't. Yeah, 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 you didn't get That's this far. So this is this all new for you. compared the occupation of Palestinians to Nazis. This, to say that this means you want a, a, a nuclear war. What kind of bullshit is that? If the United States sent weapons to Palestinians to defend themselves against Israeli aggression, would this guy say, "Oh, you're you know you you're a war hawk, you're pro war"? My guess is no. My guess is he would understand. Well, that's those. I know. I know this does not have to be said to our audience here because you guys are smart. But I'm sure you guys understand the difference between arming Nazis who was killing, shelling, and torturing Eastern Russians to arming a potential movement of people who are being colonized, being victims of imperialism. There's just a story I saw on Democracy Now! I watched this earlier today. Another 14-year-old boy was just killed in occupied Gaza. Literally 160 Palestinians dead in Gaza this year. And he's comparing that to the Nazi army, the Azov Battalion, in, in this conflict that's been going on since 2014. This is unbelievable. This is some shit that I think what Ben Shapiro was to say. These white leftists are the exact same thing. They are same as the people they criticize. This is an unbelievable statement. And I know I'm Nick, I and the thing is, I was they, they, throw, they throw Palestinians under the bus when they want to go vote. But now you're trying yeah, now. to use their pain in this way. He's trying to say, for those that don't understand what he's trying, he's trying to say that what Russia, this war that Russia going into the Ukraine is the same thing of what Israel is doing to the Palestinians. That's yeah. what he's trying to compare. That is so such an intellectually infantile I've never heard of such a ridiculous uh, analogy. I I I say a pretty ridiculous analogy sometimes, but that is probably some ridiculous. That's some ridiculous shit right there. I let I let it play for a bit now because I I told you at this point I'm in new territory because I quit around like four forty five. I remember so that's why I had those defensive weapons. That's an unbelievable statement. I let it play. Jesus. So that's very different by its nature because it is defensive. But now all of a sudden. You're saying this is, you know, she wants nuclear war. She wants World War III. I have many criticisms of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Sure. Uh, I was uh, criticizing her during Force the Vote. Um, I was 
annoyed that she voted for Pelosi to be speaker? He didn't say criticize. He was annoyed. That means that was a feeling he had internally. Um, she cast some terrible votes on the issue of Israel Palestine. Like I've criticized her. You can go back and check the Secular Talk uh, YouTube library, but this criticism just doesn't make any sense. Are you Uh, this is this is sad, Nick. People listen to this guy. This yeah, is I mean, sad. I mean, like, people, I, I, this, this is, is sad, unbelievable. bro. Unbelievable. This is sad. You're playing with the lives of American citizens. You're playing with our lives. There will be no neighbors if there's a nuclear bomb. You voted to mobilize and send money to Ukrainian Nazis. You're a coward. <laughs> You're a progressive socialist. Where are you against the war mobilization? He's telling the right truth. You know that Kyle's not chiming in right now? Why, right. why? If Kyle was doing a neutral analysis on this, why is he saying, oh, yeah, he makes a good point here. You're a socialist. Why are you funding these people? You know that he, when he does not have a response ready for this guy, he lets it play. He chuckles. He chuckled. So I'm going to I'm gonna rewind it. So, so yeah, probably Jose can, for the beginning. For a beginning where, where uh, not just to hear the chuckle, but just so you can hear of the beginning of what uh, Jose begins talking here. But you hear Kyle chuckle because he doesn't, and he just lets it play. YouTube library, but this criticism just doesn't make any sense. Why are you playing with the lives of American citizens? You're playing with our lives. There will be no neighbors if there's a nuclear bomb. You voted to mobilize and send money to Ukrainian Nazis. You're a coward. You're a progressive. <laughs> well, oh wow! I didn't know hear that. Well, wait, 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 wait. So he pulled a Robbie. He pulled a yes. Robbie. Yes, so that's what they, they do. What is something we've been talking about recently? What is a tell? Of these cocky that white laugh, commentators. The, the laugh. Yes. That the laugh. laugh is trying to disrespect the the. Oh, like that's the yeah, right. <laughs> like like it's that kind of look, that peasant sort of response. And Go CJ, ahead. Remember, and CJ, remember it also a tell. We explained this on multiple shows recently. When you see our my debate with Robbie, where you chuckle when I land truth bombs. Whenever someone tells the truth to someone left and they can't rebut it, it's like almost a tick. <laughs> right. But oh, Kamala well, Harris does that too. Go, go, go back 10 seconds. He makes a powerful point about you being a socialist but funding Nazis. So then he just chuckles because he knows it's a good point. Be, you this know why? Tell. Remember, and this and it's also to the point that I made, which is criticizing AOC. Is criticizing Kyle. Do you understand yes. that? Yes. So it's him telling Kyle, you're a socialist? You support sending money to Ukraine. <laughs> yes. So he laughs like, wow, that's the, yeah, I am a so that is a personal. He is, it is incoming in like fire coming to him. That's how Kyle is taking this. But listen, on, on uh, I think yeah. it's the right place. Yeah, we, we left you a little bit. This criticism just doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Why are you playing with the lives of American citizens? You're playing with our lives. There will be no neighbors if there's a nuclear bomb. You voted to mobilize and send money to Ukrainian Nazis. You're a coward. You're a progressive socialist. <laughs> oh, that hurt. Where that hurt him bad. War mobilization. He's telling the right truth. It, it, this is unbelievable. Who invaded who? Who invaded who? He waited. He made all the good points because he didn't want to address those, and then just said, "Who invading Pooh?" That's, That's your like response to, to for, for shots fired is who I invaded know. who. And remember, him watching the segment, this is exactly the same thing that MSNBC guest was saying. Response. It's almost like a chant. He had no response for her calling out uh, the socialist for playing Nazi. So he go back to his tick. Who invaded who? Who invaded who? Who invaded who? It's like a tick. They had to say. Because you got no other argument. We we play one more, we play one more man, then we can move on because we don't have yeah, to. Yeah, then we can game. yeah. I, I think we yeah. covered a good part of it. Like we seen we, let's play just like another minute or so, and then we can wrap up the segment. Russia invaded Ukraine. Russia did the imperialist action. That's what happened. NATO did. Now I never would have expanded NATO in the first place to give them an excuse to invade, but it's very clear based on Putin's own words. That, this, that, he was probably right. going to do it anyway. I think that's the last part. Let's yeah, that's last chime point. in on he, that. He just dismantled <laughs> his own argument. So, so this is a good point to end on. He just dismantled his own argument. He's like, yo, I wouldn't have expanded NATO, but Putin debated it for no reason. Why would so Cal ask yourself this question? Let's do let's use some critical thinking. 
why wouldn't you have expanded NATO? He just said it, CJ. Cal said, if I was in, in power, I would not have expanded NATO. You will not expand it, NATO. Why, Kyle? You won't expand NATO because that would lead to Russian aggression, which means that you debunking your own argument that this is just unprovoked Russian aggression. This is a conflict that was started by NATO and escalated by the United States and CIA that supported the Maidan coup, that overthrow a democratically elected government. Why are they ignoring that part? They do not want their audience to know that there was a conflict pre-2022. Now, actually, to wrap the segment up, I want to show you guys uh, this segment from uh, Chomsky. Here we go. Uh, so I'm bringing this up because I hope I hope this hurts, Kyle, because uh, Kyle will say stuff like, oh, I, I, like I used to look at the Chomsky. I get my foreign policy chops from Chomsky. And just to show you guys how far to the right that they have drifted, Noam Chomsky is warning of the same thing that he called Jose ridiculous for. Because these people, they love to appeal to authority. So I'm going to show you, right. I'm going to show how, and the social democrats, I know there are a lot of social democrats, they love them some known Chomsky, especially when election time comes. Yeah, you know known Chomsky said vote for Biden? <laughs> so, let, so let me show you guys what known Chomsky said regarding Ukraine war. And let's see how, and this is what the position that Kyle calls crazy. Well, let's get let's get to it. For what the U.S. can do is stop acting to prevent negotiations for a long time. There's no time to review the record, but the position of the United States has been to try to undermine possibilities of negotiations. They're not alone in this. So if you take a look at the Macron, Putin, uh, discussions up to a few days before the invasion. President Macron was indeed trying very hard to avoid the invasion by uh, offering various options uh, for a peaceful settlement. Uh, Putin, we have the actual transcript of this, no guesswork. Uh, Putin was dismissive uh, at the very end couple of days before the invasion, he just dismissed it with contempt, said, sorry, I've got to go ice skating, something like that. So the US is, U.S. is not alone, but its role has been to act to make negotiations harder to achieve, unlikely. That's as recently as late April, as far as we know. Well, one thing the United States can do is stop acting like that stop, drop the position, the official position, that the war must go on to weaken Russia severely, meaning no negotiations. Would that open the way to negotiations? Diplomacy? Can't be sure. There's only one way to find out. That's to try. If you don't try, of course it won't happen. So Boris Johnson, it was also widely recorded that Russia and Ukraine, they wanted to see a peace agreement. Zelensky was down, Russia was down, and then Boris Johnson uh, got, uh, uh, interfered and the UK demanded they don't reach a peace agreement. And what Noam Chomsky agreed, well, I mean, what Noam Chomsky just explained, no word to be found in Kyle Kalinsky's discussion of this video. So when AOC is complicit with voting for weapons to Ukraine, that's sir saying, "Yeah, I don't support the process of negotiation. I want Russia to I want Russia to lose. I want to fight to the last Ukrainian." So if you guys think we were being too hard on AOC, this is what the left looked like in Europe. This is Claire Daly, and now you guys see what kind of pathetic joke. AOC is compared to Clara Daly. And this is why people had criticisms of AOC. And I don't know why Kyle Kalinsky got come to their defense. So this is, uh, hold on, let me, let me fix it. Let me, there's another video. And just to see the difference between what a real anti-war leftist looks like and, uh, and what we get. Honorevole Daly, a facoltà di replicare. Thanks, Kelly. I would love Kali Jambaski to tell me any circumstance in which NATO has played a productive role or delivered peace anywhere. History has taught us that sanctions do not end military conflict. They do not bring peace. 
They make the people suffer, not the oligarchs, the people, the people of Russia, the people of Europe. And they're not going to help save lives because the more arms you pump into Ukraine, the more the war will be prolonged, the more Ukrainians can, will die. And it might sound radical, colleagues, but the answer to war is not more war, it's peace. And peace isn't delivered by the barrel of a gun, it's delivered by diplomacy, by dialogue. You can wish away your continent's history, but we share a continent with Russia. We will sit down with Russia. There will be a negotiated peace, and this organization should be promoting it earlier rather than delaying it and making sure that more Ukrainians die. Your feigning of sympathy rings hollow. It makes me sick, to be honest with you. So... One of the people that Claire Daly is also talking about is AOC and the progressives. The AOC and progressives believe that we can bomb to peace. That is, why can't we get AOC to say say exactly what Claire Daly just said? Do you guys think we've been too hard on AOC and Kyle now? We can't get one fucking progressive politician to say anything what Claire Daly just said. 